Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. Um, I just wanted to speak to you this morning about something that the Lord put on my heart for the house of Israel, for the children and the people who follow the word, the spirit of the Most High Living God. There is a lot of confusion in the land about the different things that we are being taught, the different things we are being told as we grow and learn who we are. One of the things is <clears throat> many of the people who have taken certain positions onto themselves, there are positions that God affords to men and God gives to women. One of them is of priest. The last high priest was Yeshua. But the priests come from the line of Aaron. And there are some people who have taken on this mantle and it was not ordained by God, but they have chosen it for themselves. You can tell them by their fruits. At the same time, God is a God of order. He is not, he is a God of peace. He is not a God of confusion. Many women have been made to believe they are supposed to be silent. And that silence is used on all occasions. However, there are people, male and female, who are prophets, prophetesses, seers. This is not something man has determined. This is not something even the people themselves who are the prophets, prophetesses, seers determine. It is a call by God something that they can't resist, although many do resist it, but it just grows stronger and stronger. Watching the different things that go on with the house of Israel. At this point, we need to turn to the family. We have a lot of brothers and sisters, I'm talking our young people, who need to be taught who they are, who need to be taught that they have to show respect to their elders, not just the elders in the church, which they should. And when I say the church, I'm talking about the body of the house of Israel. I'm talking about the adults among them. These young people need to be taught and understand that in order for us to grow as a nation, they have to respect their elders in order to listen and learn from their elders. Many parents, send their children to school, but the parents have no respect for the teachers. They have no respect for the education system. So their children come in disruptive and unruly. And this should not be so among the family of Israel. These children should know, these young people who are going to grow into adults should know. When you honor the elders, you're actually honoring yourself, male and female. We can't speak or talk harshly to them in order to get them to understand how to respect one another. You cannot make a young man understand how to respect a young woman by disrespecting her. In order for him to honor her, the older men have to honor her and speak to her accordingly. If she's fallen away or if the young man is out of alignment, with the word of God, then we teach them. We don't disrespect them. And again, this is why I say there are some people who have chosen for themselves the mantle of leader. They have become exalted. And when the words and the work they do does not line up with the word of God, then you know that spirit by its fruit, that that is not of God. Would I say they are not um, a Hebrew? No, I would not. But I would say they were not appointed to that position. And it is a very dangerous thing to take on an authority not given to you by God. Um, when it comes to females, I do recognize what is written in the book of uh, Timothy and what is written in 1 Corinthians. However, prophesying prophets, also when you look, look at the book of Joel, uh, in the last days, the Lord shall pour out his spirit on the male and female servant. 
If you have people running around telling females to be quiet and disrespecting them, in reality, you are not silencing the female. You're disrespecting the law and the order of God himself. If God put his spirit on them to prophesy and you try to silence them, as is written in the book of Acts chapter 5, if it is the work of men, people, flesh, it will come to nothing. But if it is the work of the Most High, then you will find out you are fighting against God. God has ordained all of us for a mighty work. We are supportive of one another. We honor one another. When we fight against one another, we are actually causing harm to the body. As I stated, there are prophets, prophetesses. In many cases, there are some people who choose to ignore those portions of the truth that are written in the Bible or the Sefer. They, they choose to ignore it as though uh, it never occurred or it doesn't matter anymore. But the word of God says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Line upon line, precept upon precept. If you look at the mighty leader Moses... One of the things God did was touch his older sister, Miriam. Miriam followed the baby Moses when he was in the river. When they were slaughtering the Hebrew males, his sister followed him and she spoke to the daughter of Pharaoh. She spoke to her about that baby, asking her, do you want me to get a nurse for the baby? She ran and got her own mother, who was actually Moses' mother, to nurse him. Although I doubt very seriously if the daughter of Pharaoh realized what was going on, but Miriam at a young age was being touched by God to watch over her brother Moses because God had a mighty work for Moses. At the same time, when Moses rose to his position, it is written in the Bible, God speaks of Moses, Miriam, and Aaron throughout the Bible. Miriam was a prophetess, and no one told Miriam to be silent. When Miriam did something she wasn't supposed to do, God struck her with leprosy. That's understood, but we're not going to stop the focus, okay? We also know she was put out of the camp. And then she was welcomed back in. We also know that Aaron also faltered and sinned and made that golden calf. And God took his life for it. But he did not take the anointing off of Aaron, nor did he take it off of Miriam. Miriam's death is even mentioned. Moses, too, spoke assumptively. And God called him to account for that. Although Moses was honored, God spoke to him face to face. So when you discount people because of their gender, God favors no man. No man. When God wants to do his mighty work, he will use who he wants to use. And many people seem to have determined that God's prophetesses, the mothers of Israel, you want them to be silent, but they can't be silent because the power and the spirit of God Almighty is speaking through them. When Judith was with the nation of Israel and they were being besieged by uh, Nebuchadnezzar's army, headed by the general Holofernes. They had determined to give up and surrender in five days. When Judith had prayed to God, and she had determined to go down into the enemy camp, the men, she went to the elders of the people, she spoke to them. She asked them to open the gates. And she went down into the enemy camp. The men did not tell her, keep silent, you cannot talk. Israel would have fallen. She went down there, she spoke to Holofernes, she dwelt among them because God sent her to do a mighty work. When God wants to save, he will use whomever 
he wants to use. He used Judith in that moment. And Judith spoke. She did all that the Spirit of the Most High God commanded her to do. And in the process, where Holofernes thought that he was going to defile Judith, he thought he would lay with her. Judah followed what the Spirit of the Lord put on her. And when she sat before Holofernes and he drank himself into a stupor, she took his own sword and cut off his head with two blows and went back into the Israel camp. And when she entered, she let them know it was victorious. She had not been defiled. And Israel was saved. When you look at the birth of Jesus and when his mother and father took him into the temple, and this is New Testament, Simeon was there, as was the prophetess Anna. And Anna spoke over Yeshua. We have to understand that what God is doing is for our entire nation. And no one should be speaking, uh, looking for their own acclaim. This is for the building up of the house. And God will speak through whomever he will. When God calls prophets and prophetesses, no man can silence that prophet or prophetess. Because that is the work of God. If you fight against God, you will come up against something you don't even be Begin to understand, and nor do you want to. In these last days, we recognize these are the last days. It is written in the book of Ephesians. God has appointed apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But we also know that many churches, they don't even honor po uh, prophets. They try not to recognize them. They assume that Prophecy and prophets are the same thing, and they are not. Many people witness to one another because the Spirit of the Lord is upon them. But it doesn't change the fact that God has leaders and teachers. They don't stop leading and teaching just because we witness to one another. And there is a difference between a prophet and somebody who is prophesying. It is written in the word and a child shall lead them. God may go so far as to choose a child. And we know even the apostles at one point when the children were brought to Yeshua, they wanted the children to move away. But Yeshua said, suffer the little children to come unto me. For so, such as theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And unless you become like a child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because children are very kind. Children don't look upon people based on their color. They don't look at them based on their gender. They deal with people straight from the heart, just like God does. Man looks on the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. And some people's heart, they may have started out to do a very glorious and good work, but they need to go back and get before the spirit of the most high God because they have become exalted. They have taken it upon themselves to speak for God when God did not give them the message that they speak. Telling women not to speak. God has prophets and prophetesses. When you tell a prophetess of the most high God that she cannot speak, you are actually fighting against the most high. God has mothers in Israel, just like he did with Deborah. Just like he used Miriam. When you read about King Joash, when he got the book of the law, the king and the priest, the high priest, they read it. But they sent for the prophetess Holda to come and interpret that word. To get a word from the Most High God. Because the one thing they recognized was it was God. It was coming through God. If she was false, her words would have fallen to the ground. And if you lie on God, if you deny God, that's something where God deals with you uh, individually. It's not something that you really want to fall into. As we learn and as we grow.
We need to support one another. There are young people running around nowadays disrespecting each other, disrespecting their parents, their parents teaching them to be disrespectful because they think it's funny. They, they, they don't understand the power of what they're doing. These are the things that we're supposed to work together on. These are the things that make us stronger as a nation, as a people. We are a peculiar people. Yes, we are a kingdom of priests, but God does the choosing. God touches who he wants. No man can appoint this position unto himself, although there are some who have. There are some who have, and they are going to answer for it. If you have a false prophet among you, God will reveal it. But in order to have a false prophet, that means you also have a real prophet, prophetess. And if you understand that in the last days he will pour out his spirit on the male and female servant and that they will dream dreams and see visions, then you shouldn't say in another sentence, let the females be quiet. Some of them are prophetesses, just like some of the brothers are prophets. Let the Lord do his mighty work. Let this go out. Teach the people. Guide them and let the blessings of the Lord be upon us. Brothers and sisters, I wanted to share this message because it was on my heart. And for you to understand that God will use whom he will. You cannot silence the spirit of the most high God. I wasn't called by a person. I did not learn about being an Israelite through the mouth of a man or a woman. The spirit of the most high God came in. If somebody has an issue, let God choose between you and I. Let him show it to you. Let him reveal it to you. But if you're fighting against the power of God, that's something you're going to have to answer for. You need to pray and ask God to open your eyes. Those who are being exalted, those who are thinking solely because I am a male alone, that somehow makes me above... God will humble whomever exalts themselves. It does not matter. And as the spirit of the word said, and a child shall lead them. After all is said and done, it may be a little child. Because they understand the beauty, the glory, and the love of God. Blessings, peace, and mercy be upon you. May you grow in your walk, your knowledge. May your spirit Grow closer to the Most High God in truth and revelation. Peace, brothers and sisters.